Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first ever episode of the Hotspur News podcast. This is a podcast series where we talk about uh, previous reviews and um, current situations revolving around the club. Uh, this is episode one. We're joined by Josh, my other colleague. I'm also joined by uh, Spurs fan Sean. How are you guys doing? All right. Yeah, I'm good. All good, all good. So basically, in this episode, we're going to focus on three different aspects. First of all, the Newcastle game. Uh, second of all, the United game, which is on Sunday. And uh, lastly, we're going to discuss Jose Maria. So we're going to start with um, uh, so we're going to start with the Newcastle game. Um, obviously, two two. Um, it feels like a loss, in my opinion. Uh, a big two points dropped, considering we are in contention for top four. Well, to be honest, we still are. But looking at that performance, it's there's not much hope, to be honest. Uh, so Josh, I'll start with you. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Because for me, it was a bit, it was a bit embarrassing. Let's be real. Yeah, I said it was an embarrassment on um, obviously in the live watch long. Uh, we can't draw. I think Newcastle and form are the worst team in the league, and let's be real, they probably are. Um, it's an embarrassment. I mean, they just came off a loss of three 0 against Brighton. It's like, and they're quite shit as yeah. well. So. Mm. Yeah, it's just shocking and embarrassing. I mean, the most baffling thing for me is that, I mean, this Newcastle side played five at the back, which is pretty understandable because they needed the points, obviously. Mm. But as well as that, they had no Say Maximan and no Callum Wilson. They had 22 shots against us, which is like, for me, like, it's just baffling. And considering, like, and we conceded 22 shots to a Steve Bruce side who were playing five at the back. And let's be real. Looking at the chances that John and Smith, fair enough, fair enough that he did score um, and Jordan did take his goal well. But in the second half, there was this chance he had when he took it down and he fired it just wide. If that's Callum Wilson, it's back of the net, like, easily. And yeah, same with Dwight Gale's chance. That's Callum Wilson. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be honest, I think if Newcastle on. were clinical and took their chances, we would have lost that. But, but Sean talked to me, like, 22 yeah, shots I mean, against a Steve Bruce I, side. I mean, going into it with... <laughs> In our last five, we won four of them. So we're favoured, like, like Josh said, you know, Newcastle were not on form, not playing good football, playing Steve Bruce football, where actually they sit back and I know we're quite typical throughout this season. It was a typical performance from us, you know. We, the goal, you know, when we conceded it, everyone knew it was going to happen. We started off slow. And, and, and like you said, even though they started defensively, which they were going to do, we need to hit them and the fact that all these shots coming against us and there was no response, especially mm. in some of the games where I thought, even at the end, where we went two or another game where we sort of let ourselves down, we then really pick it up at the end. But I don't even think we did that very much. I think we were slow, off pace mm. for a lot of the game. Mm. Yeah, looking at the first half, I thought it was quite similar to the Crystal Palace game. Uh, first of all, first of all, considering how slow he was. And I think the most important thing is that it took the opposition. Um, it took the opposition team to score a goal to actually wake us up. So, for example, Palace Benteke scored in the second half. We come out and we look like a completely different side. Like we look like the team that was top of league second half against Palace, and it was the same with Newcastle. I mean, three goals in the space of what? What was it? Five minutes? Like, I mean, Newcastle mm, score, yeah. and then we go down the other end and score two goals. Like, it's just so frustrating because it shows what we can do. Like especially with that attack. Like he's. Like easily up there with in to, I'd say top three especially attacks in the league. I mean I mean this is the same side that scored six against United, scored three against West Ham, scored uh got a clean sheet against Arsenal, clean sheet against City, yeah, exactly. scored four against Burnley. Like this team has scored so many goals and um and also especially, I mean Yeah, go on. It's not just so much about like the goal scorers, but in the middle, you know, we should have controlled the ball in midfield, and as much as we did, I think, and dominated very well. That's where the sort of link into all these goals that you know we could yeah. have sealed that off for, for one in in the first half and mm -hmm. start of the second half. We, we have we have the numbers to do that, and it doesn't matter how many defenders they're playing, it doesn't matter what football they're playing, we have the talent to do it. So what's missing for us not to be able to go out and do that is what is sort of the the problem here. I think in that game, especially, I just thought we were rushing things too quickly. And I think, um, I was said to Max, like, we should bring on someone like Winks, even though he's a bit shit, but he slows the pace down and he just lets us keep the ball. Yeah. And I think, Lamella, I could see why he brought Lamella on. But you have mm. to blame him. In a way, Lamella was at fault because you can see he's got Son and Kane through and he chooses Kane yeah. when Son's clearly got more of a chance of scoring. And it could have been an entirely mm -hmm. different game. We could have been talking about us winning 
And what's sorry for Australian is that this is like right at the end of the game as well. Like this is the big chance for us to. Yeah, was it was like a minute after. This is a big chance for us to it. snatch and grab the three points because yeah. for me, we didn't deserve a point. Like looking at the cho- um, looking at the chances there. Obviously, first half, Larissa's double save against Dwight Gale. Jolinson missed a golden chance in the yeah, second half. I mean, I mean looking at the chances Newcastle had, like I'm telling you, like we could have easily lost that game. Like if, literally, if that's against a clinical side, we would have lost convincingly, not just. Not just by one goal, but I was about to say, yeah, like, absolutely. this game is also a prime example of the same frailties that have occurred in terms of us conceding goals, individual errors, for the, uh, the uh, back game game Frank Anger for the first goal, for example, and mm-hmm. also, especially going for it when we're not winning. Like, it happens every time. Like, I forgot, I, I, I think we're, I think we're in second place. Um, if games finished at half time behind Man City, like, if games finished yeah. at half time. We'd be yeah. in second place right now in the league. Like first half FC, it's simple as that. To be honest, like we just seem to crumble. And yeah. and what do you think? And what do you think that is? You like, I mean, like, what does that say about the mentality of this squad at the moment? I think if, if you're sort of stopping halfway, there's uh, it's, it's it's hard to talk about mentality. If like you said, you know, we could mm. be second if if the games are half as long. You think, well, actually, why can't we carry that further into the games, deeper into the games, and actually? There's got to be more that we could put in. Uh, there's got to be, there's got to be a link somewhere, which is quite clearly undone to allow that sort of just yeah. like, that sort of mentality just wants to drop off in the second half. We're actually very comfortable. We come and do the same thing again and make all three points. And it's like you said, where actually with these performances, we don't really deserve anything. Hmm. I mean, as well, I think that also comes from training. Maybe this shows that they're not training enough, especially the defenders, because we've seen throughout this whole season and. Like games, West Ham is a prime example. We were dominating that game until the 80th minute, and then all of a sudden, like we lose focus, we switch, and we draw yeah. the game. When really we should yeah. easily be winning that. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I was going to comment on one. Trainer. Yeah, I was going to comment on one more thing about the Newcastle game, the back line. Um, if you notice, looking at the back line, so the back four for the Newcastle game was regular on. Uh, Roden, Sanchez, and Tanganga. I'm looking at that lineup. Sorry, not lineup. Um, I'm looking at that back four, and I'm thinking there's no sort of experience in that back four whatsoever. Okay, fair enough. Like, I think the only, I think the only what, I think the only <coughs> sort of experience that you could potentially like convey as experience is Regulon, considering he won the Europa League with Sevilla and stuff like he's and and exper- and Regulon's like experience in Europe. But apart from that. There's no experience in that back line. I think Tanganga is what twenty years old. Sanchez is still only twenty four. Tanganga is twenty twelve. Though I swear, with Ajax. <clears throat> what? San- yeah, maybe, but at the same time, we must remember Sanchez is still only twenty four years old. So there's still no, twenty four. Like, yeah. There's no proper yeah, experience. Also- I mean, I'm, I mean, I just don't understand. Like, I don't understand. Like, I know, I, I totally understand. Like, um, I mean, this is the same team that beat Aston Villa 2-0 and I totally respect that but at the same time like I mean there's no excuse not to play Toby in there because like I know Toby may not have as much pace as he used to do but in my opinion he's still got it and he's still up there with some of the best centre-backs in the league and like and considering like there's just no experience like in that back line like without Toby you can see the difference like I mean Toby was um one of our centre-backs during the period when we were top of the league I think it was him and Dyer as the centre-back pairing like it kind of shows how it kind of shows how more commanding the back line mm-hmm. is. Like, what do you um? I'd say like, what do you think the back four should be for the rest of the season? I mean, I don't. I think something's happened behind the scenes that's huge because I think Toby's been thrown under the bus by Mourinho recently. So yeah, he has. we don't know what's happened behind the scenes, but he. I don't think he would drop Ardaviro just like that. Like, I don't think he would because he. I think he knows he's a best centre back, but. I think Mourinho's either said something to Toby or and Toby's mm. not reacted well or it mm. maybe Toby's criticised his tactics or something like that and Mourinho doesn't like that and mm. I don't know. But I mm. would say our best like four would be Regulon, uh, Roden, um, Ardavirald and I'd say Orin. Yeah. I would probably agree on that. Like I know Tanganga, yeah. like I love him to bits, and I think and, and I think Tanganga's got a bright future ahead of him. But also, you must remember, 
I think this has been Oreo's best season at the club. Like, I'm being for real. Definitely. I think so, he's only uh, made one proper mistake, and that was the Leicester penalty. Other than that, I think he's had a pretty decent season, and I think it's been his best season at the club. And I don't think there's no excuse. Like, I know he's coming back from injury, and it's kind of risky not to get him injured again, which kind of leads to like more experience, more, um, more, um, in, more um, inexperienced players coming to the side. But I think I agree. Like, Oreo overall, like his season has been better. Like I know he's got more game time, but I think he deserves to be back in that back four uh, because mm. in terms of his aggression, like it shows what Mourinho wants to bring, which is passion. So yeah. I'm not, I don't, I don't mean passion as in like get a red card. I mean, passion is like, like, I mean, passion is like wanting to win the game, if you know what I mean. I mean, I, I mean, Sean, what, uh, Sean, like, would you make any changes to the back four or would you, would you keep it like Josh said? I think the like, problem we've got at the moment is with, uh, with Sanchez, he's got this sort of stigma around him that actually he's the one making all those fakes. And, and I don't really like the scapegoating of him. I think there's a lot of dirt put on his name for mistakes. He actually is a good centre back, and I haven't really got that many problems with him because he puts in you know, proper performances and he does slip up. And it's like goes back to the discussion of you know this season, it's individual errors costing mm. us. So I wouldn't necessarily say I don't want to see him on the side again because like with somebody next to him, which is probably what will open up in the summer. I think he could be really good, but I'm mm. still like that. Like what Josh said, definitely regular on. I play. I start playing Rod on a lot more at the, towards the end yeah. of the season. Going to next season, he's going to be, mm. I think, really good. And then yeah, I, I go between Toby and Sanchez. I'd probably play Toby more just while he's got that 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 mentality yeah. left in him. And he has got that experience, especially with his time at the club with Vatonga. I think they were that you know, they are an example of how a centre back partnership mm. should be. I'm not saying we're not going to replace Vatonga, but that's the sort of thing that needs to be formed. And then, yeah, with Aurier, this season, like, stand up performances for me, like United, I think he just played so well. Yeah, and especially, and I think there's, there's, he, he, he's got that left, definitely. Yeah, and I think, like, a good example for Sanchez is, like, he's played well, but he's made individual mistakes it was Arsenal. Even though it wasn't yeah, exactly. in my opinion. But he played very, very well in that game. I think him and Toby were quite good, even though we were quite poor that day. Um <laughs> But yeah, I think the difference with Sanchez is if he can cut out those mistakes, I think he could become one of the best centre backs in the league. I think he he's he's got good he's got natural ability as a centre back, but he just needs to cut out these mistakes. And I mm. think, like I said, people do scapegoating, but I could see why they do. But I don't judge. Oh, think definitely, he's just yeah, a bad definitely. Player. Like everyone makes mistakes, but the thing is, Sanchez needs to mm. stop doing them consistently. Because we say uh, we said we were on good form, like from Burnley, but let's be real, no one really challenged him. Like Burnley had Joe Rodriguez up front, who's like was good like three or four years ago. Fulham, yeah. I don't think he was that great against um, Aston Villa. I mean, they're Jack Grealish FC, aren't they? So he didn't have a lot to do. Yeah, it's yeah. not really. Yeah, I, just, I think, and I think that we, yeah, that's a good point. That. Actually, I was about to say that. that's a good point because um, um, before I go on Sanchez, I was going to go back to Roden real quick. Like I thought in the Newcastle game, I think he was our only good defender, and I don't like the way people. Uh, um, I don't like the way people were um, are people that like, really criticising Tanganga because I think Regulon was just as poor. I mean, both fullbacks were half decent going forward, but also both of them did get caught out defensively as well. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, people like I mean, people don't blame Regon because Regon's been very good all season. But but Tanganga's still young. But anyways, on to Sanchez. I think I think Josh is right against against lower quality teams like Burnley. Like it's uh, um, I guess it's very simple. But looking at the game on Sunday, you can tell that you can tell the Newcastle attack was really targeting him because we because uh, we can emphasise his coordination is not the best. We know that right. Sanchez's coordination. Is not great at all, and we saw that um, from the Sunday game, Arsenal game, and there's many other games where he has made mistakes. But like Josh said, I think like especially with Toby Nixon, like with Toby next to Sanchez, like an experienced defender who's been at the club for five six years, like um, I, for me, like it could really improve his performances. But yeah, um, anyways, to finish off the Newcastle review, who who are your man of the matches? Okay, I said not yeah, to delay at the not point, it. but. I think if you actually look at it, Kane, because I just feel bad. Kane, Kane, Kane or Joe? He just he was brilliant yeah. in that game, and I think obviously right at the end he could have had his hat trick. Um, mm. 
he destroyed that Newcastle defence to bits and yeah. Yeah, if he, he walked through them four, all game. He's literally going to carry us to it. Like, mm. he'll have to just pull off how he's been playing now. But, yeah. Mm. yeah. I've noticed that quite a bit this season. Like, even in the poor performances, like, Kane's the only player who, like, stands out for me. Like, I mean, to be honest, like, yeah. there's been quite a few poor performances, but but Kane has, like, been the one player who, like, really stands out and makes us feel like, oh, yeah, like, we deserve something. Well, well obviously, we didn't, but Kane makes us believe, like, we could have deserved something. Yeah. But, Sean, uh, but, Sean, do you think Kane was man the match as well? Yeah, I, I'd put him up there, I think. He does, he does now. It's almost like those two two goals in the space of like three, three, mm. three or four minutes now is his standard. So obviously you've got to praise him for it. And I think he deserves the sort of man of match, even though I don't really think mm. we deserve much from that game. I also mm. think Joe deserved it. Like you said, he was an exemplar defender in that game. Mm. And it'll be interesting because I read as well online that he can't play in the in the cup final. So just going back mm. to that Sanchez and yeah. Toby discussion, but they're going to have to be without you know, Joe in the final, which will be he played he played for Swansea, I think. So it would just be interesting to see like, you know, how how will you react going up to that, how we'll react after it, because for a young player like him it would have been the best possible opportunity. So I, I'd definitely put him up there. Yeah. And that's Newcastle review ended two two. Um obviously big points dropped. Feels like a loss, but obviously I think we're in sixth place, uh three or uh, two or three points off the top four behind West Ham. So still to play for. Um Speaking of all to play for, another big game this Sunday, 4.30pm, Manchester United at home. Whew, uh, I'll tell you what, um, I'll tell you what, um, as Hoiberg said, I think it was just before or during the international break, we must treat every game like it was a final. And, yeah, um, this is a final. And against a big team like Man United, who have a big history, obviously, and, and who have been very good this season, obviously second place right now. Uh I think they've got Europa League game tonight against Granada. Um, is it away, the first leg? Yeah, it's away. away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so. yeah, so it's a nice away to Granada in the first leg, so maybe that could cause a bit of fatigue, but at the same time, like it will still be a tough game. Um, obviously, we're in sixth. United are in second right now. Um, Josh, talk to me. Um, I mean, obviously, like last time it was 6-1 at Old Trafford. Um, what are your thoughts going to this one? I think that result is quick. Completely irrelevant because really ever since then United have turned on gear and they've been very good. And I think, mm. like, I just, I'm not confident going into it at all. I mean, we're quite poor right now and people don't remember United are unbeaten this season away from home. Like, they haven't lost a game and they've played teams like Man City, Liverpool. Like, they've, they went to City and won. So, mm. it's going to be a very, 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 very tough game. I think against Mourinho's mm. old club, uh, then playing Thursday night and we having a four weeks of rest, maybe that'll give us an advantage. But yeah, mm. I'm still not confident either way. Yeah, um, in my opinion, um, in terms of um, what, what's the word? Um, in terms of um, uh, reliability, I think we're quite similar to Man United. I think, I mean, obviously, like in terms of our perspective, we rely on Harry Kane a lot, but United rely on Bruno Fernandes a lot. And um, I was watching the United Brighton game uh, last Sunday, I think it was, Sunday night, the 2 1. And it's Man United, obviously, Brighton going ahead and they came from behind to win. But but I think um, I think last Sunday, like, I was watching that game and United looked quite poor going forward. Yeah, they, yeah, they were. I mean, to be honest, like, I mean, looking at Sunday's game, like, I just can't see, like, any of. Um, I completely understand that none of us fans are going to the. Um, uh, I agree none of us fans are going into the game that like, confident whatsoever, but but in my opinion, like there's obviously like I mean like, for me, like there's every chance we can get a result out of it. Like if we can keep Fernandez quiet, I mean there's every chance we can get a result. But then again, looking at our recent form, like I'm still not confident. But then again, I have to feel positive because there's every chance like we can beat any team in this league. But then again, it kind of depends on the mentality of the squad. I mean, Sean, what do you think going into this one? Yeah, I mean, I've done the sort of like last five fixtures again, and we've both won the same amount of games, and they, they've had two draws, and obviously the loss against Arsenal weighs us down. But like you said about the sort of mentality going, we're not confident, and it's sort of it's sort of not, not embarrassing to say, but the only reason why we've got this bit of confidence is because United are playing midweek, and it's because they didn't play brilliantly against Brighton. So it's like it's going to be a big job, and especially in the middle, their link up with sort of Fernandez going forward is going to be really important for 
uh, Hoybjerg and Ndombele to keep him quiet because that's where a lot of their lot of their play starts and getting out onto the wings where we were, I was just talking about with Newcastle the slightly quiet defence and the uh, the fullbacks and wingbacks just getting caught out. It's, it's where they sort of it's where they're going to get their chances. Mm-hmm. Well, it was your last time it was six one and 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 I know the results really irrelevant now, but at the same time, like in that game. You notice for the full 90 minutes, like we really exposed that Man United defence. But since then, it's really got more commanding. Obviously, Harry Maguire, um, for yeah, me, they, um, I don't think he's been worth 80 million, but he's been very good this season. A very underrated player. A player that people seem to criticise a lot just because of his price and stuff. 80 million pounds. And may, in my opinion, he's more like a 50 million player. Sort of like a John Stone sort of price. But I think he's been very good. I think Wamba Saka, one of the best right backs in the league. I think... Potentially Luke first Shaw, or second, maybe first. Like in my opinion, he's very good. Luke Shaw, hundred percent, the best left back in the league this season. I think. Definitely. I think since the six one, that United defence has tightened up really good, and um, I think it'll be quite difficult for us to score the goals. But then again, like with the quality we have going forward, yeah. Kane, Son, Lucas Moura, pace, and everything. And I think in the six one, the Mellis side of the game, and and maybe that could have helped in terms of like passion and aggression. Mm. But then again, like Cla- looking at. Yeah, but then again, um, I mean, obviously last time, like, proper shit three for the red card, but mm, yeah, at the exactly. same time, that's what the Mellor's all about. Like, I know it was, like, really embarrassing from a Spurs fan's perspective, but then again, um, I'm not going to say the word, but you know what Mourinho said in the documentary, you've got to be a bunch of, you know, the rest. So, I guess that's what the Mellor did, but, um, yeah, like... And then again, like it's not going to be an easy game whatsoever. But for me, like, if we can keep Fernandez quiet, especially because I think Fernandez is their main shining light since he arrived. I mean, um, I think before um, Fernandez arrived, I mean, I mean United were lacking in defence as well as creativity. Um, I don't think they were scoring a bunch of goals. But they struggled to score against teams like Brighton and Newcastle at home at Old Trafford. Yeah, um, I think really depressing times for United at that stage. But since Fernandez has come in. And what's so frustrating is that we literally needed to pay an extra five million to get Bruno Fernandes. Like, just imagine that. Just imagine our team right now. Like, I'm sorry, that front four, Fernandes, Kane, Bell, Son. Like, that front four is like stupid. Like, it's like it's ridiculous. But then again, like five million extra, and we would, and Fernandes would be in a Spurs show right now. But then again, none of that. Like, moving on to mm. Fernandes for United. Like, he's been like their shining light. I think he's got what yes. sixteen goals this season. Fernandez, yes, as a cam he's as well. Like, no, like, he's, like, I know people call him Fernandez and everything, but for me, like I think behind Kane, he's been the best player in the league this season. Obviously, I, um, he has, I, think, he has, that. I think Jack Grealish has been better than him, and I think on a stretch maybe Kevin De Bruyne, but hmm. I think yeah, he's definitely been one of the best players in the league this season. I think without a doubt. But the thing that mm. with Fernandez that maybe might give us an edge, Man United don't really show up in the big games against the top six. No, I was about I mean, to say that, yeah. Yeah, I think after yeah, they lost 6 1 to us, they've kind of sat back a little bit. I think, and I think this mm. game will be quite a boring game because I think both teams will kind of sit back um, mm. and try and hit each other on the counter attack. So mm. I think as well, Fernandez doesn't even show up as well. Maybe that's because they play quite mm. a negative style, or maybe it's mm. because. His mentality, but yeah, we'll have to just wait and see on Sunday. Yeah, that's a good point actually, because um, because um, for me, like with United and the Big Six, there's been quite a few nil nils. Uh, I think United and Chelsea yeah. ended up nil nil at Old Trafford and Stamford Bridge. I think United Arsenal at the Emirates finished nil nil. Um, at Old Trafford, it finished one nil Arsenal because of a penalty. Um, and with us, they finished six one, but that's a one off. You know, that, that's just a one off. Like. And then they, and then they beat well, City as well. So. But most of the games against the big six United have played in, it's finished nil-nil. I think it was nil-nil against City, Old Trafford as well, uh, two-nil at the Etihad, obviously. Um, and I agree with Josh. I think it will be quite a boring game because I think in terms of the Premier League, United have nothing to play for. I think top four secured for them. Their second place. I, I mean, for me, there's no way they catch in Man City. I'm, um, I think Man City are only a few games to win in the title, am I right? Yeah. Two or three games. The closest we can get, I think, is either Chelsea at home or it's Newcastle. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, very close. Yeah. So yeah, so Man City are very close to winning. So I think, so I think United. I won't be surprised if they focus more on the Europa League. I mean, obviously. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, 
I mean, Man United are on top. Um, I mean, Man United are on course to get um, Champions League because they're in second place, obviously. But obviously, Europa League. Um, obviously, Europa League. I don't think they've won a trophy in four or five years. United. I think the last one they won was was it Europa League twenty seventeen against Ajax. Yeah, the Europa League. I think. Yeah, um, yeah, and Mourinho was manager for United then. So obviously, it'd be nice for them if they could win the Europa League. So I think they'll concentrate more on that. But <laughs> then again. I agree with Josh. I think it'll be a very boring game because United have nothing to play for. But Sean, what do you think? Uh, I think, think I, I should be going to this one. Although I agree with the sort of like possibility for a boring game, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think that you like you look at the way United City. I know that was actually not the most exciting game, you know, including two goals. But I think neither managers. Well, United have nothing to prove. Like you said, they've secured their position at the table. They're probably going to finish second. They're going to get the football they want next season. But actually, I don't think Mourinho is going to go into it wanting it to be boring. I think he's going to go in with energy. And I think that's what we need to go in with. And I think if we are as one as a team, I could see us maybe going forward, getting mm. in front. But the problem is, like you said, is actually at the back. You know, United have got it yeah. completely covered. They will keep us quiet for, you know, the broad amount of the game. And, and they know how to do that after, after the 6-1. And, yeah, there's obviously a debate about some of their key players. We talk about Fernandez and their results this season against bigger teams, but they will they will keep the wings quiet, and I don't think they're going to get they're going to they're going to let Harry Kane near mm. near the goal. Mm. Yeah, for me that's a good point because um uh, because um as I said earlier. It, as I said earlier, um, ever since the six one, the United defence has been very compact, very commanding, very tight. Um, and it's conceded. Um, and United conceded. United conceded um, uh, a lot less goals since the six-one. So then again, like in terms of energy, um, I mean, energy is a very important point. I'm, I mean, we need to pressure United because because for us it's a must-win game. Therefore, we need to score. Obviously, uh, I think for United it's a one-off game. I like. I don't think it's a game that means much to them because obviously second place. I think they're secure with second place now. Um, and I think United have a pretty simple running as well. So um, I think they'll focus more on Europa League, but at the same time we have to win the game. Um, I guess we can only focus on ourselves, other than Man. Um, I guess we can only focus on ourselves and not Manchester United. So therefore, we really have to pressure them. Um, and I think we will do. Like, um, I mean, considering like Hoiberg said, uh, we have to treat this game like it's a final. Like, I expect the players to pressure them and um, um, and show their and show um, and show their um, their energy and desire. But anyways. Before, uh, before we move on to the final aspect, what are your guys' predictions for Sunday? Uh, I'm going to go nil-nil. I think it'll be a ball draw, like I said. Um, I think both teams will just mm. sit back, they'll defend. Um, maybe we might nick a goal. I could definitely see it happening with the attack we have. But, yeah, I just... yeah. And I think United you know, might be quite tired from midweek, so I don't think they're going to be they're going to have an, like, a lot of energy. So yeah, I think I think going into it, I think nil nil is maybe a bit optimistic. Just looking at the sort of attacking threat that both teams have, I put one all as my sort of like somewhere around there. What either one team will just get a one one goal advantage, or it will be a sort of very spread out game with not a lot of sort of energy towards the middle and the end. So if you think it's going to happen, it will happen sort of first half. Hmm. Yeah, um, in terms of home, overall, our record against the big six, well, well the so-called big six at home, it's all right. I think, um, I think obviously, we lost 1-0 to Chelsea, lost 3-1 to Liverpool, Liverpool. But also, we did beat City 2-0 and Arsenal 2-0. So, overall, our record against the big six at home is okay this season. It's pretty average. Um, I've, um, I mean, obviously, last time at home, it finished one all. Uh, Bergwijn and... Um, um, and obviously a Fernandez penalty um, to level the game in the last ten minutes. But um, but to be honest, like I've got to remain positive. Like I can see us nicking a one 0 win here. I think if we can mm. really press that United defence and and grab that goal, and then do a classic Mourinho part of the bus performance and get away with it, I can see us get getting on, one get on, get on to get, get on to Soko sitting back. That, yeah, move to Soko ninety fifth minute yeah. overhead kick. Yeah. That's <laughs> That'll be lovely. But anyways, um, obviously Man United at home on Sunday at 4 30. Um obviously like there'll be a watch run on our channel for that, obviously. And um I just got a skybox, so I'll be able to watch the game on the TV. So big upgrades in terms of connections. But 
Anyways, moving on to the final aspect of the podcast. It's a very controversial one. Um, a man that many people have been discussing over the last month or so, our manager, Jose Mourinho. I mean, I mean, he came in November 2019. We're in 14th. He took us to Europa League. Um, and we're currently on course to get top four. Well, we're in contention to get four. Like, I wouldn't say on course because um, because for me, like, I would say our running isn't the best. Um I'd say that overall, like compared to other teams, I will take it. I think we've got three away games and five home games to go. Um, overall, our home record has been quite good this season. Um, I mean, obviously, like, we had a couple of slip-ups here and there against Leicester and stuff like that. But this season, like before... Okay, I can answer this for me. Uh, before the season started, if I asked you, would you be happy at this stage, 30 games in, Battling for top four and in a Kawa Cup final, would you be happy? I'd be yeah. okay with that. Because <laughs> if you'd also told me we just lost 3 0 to Dinamo Zaga and out the Europa League, I would have yeah. been like, oh, I don't know. Because at the beginning of the season, I didn't really have hope for us getting top four because I thought the teams above it, we had teams that better than us. So I was banking on yeah. us winning the Europa League. So I'm not really sure if I'd be generally happy with it. Hmm. <laughs> I had a lot of weight on the sort of the Europa League this season, and actually, especially when back in the start of the season, when we were playing really good football and we were top of the league, it was it was something I had a lot of confidence in. And now we're at the stage where obviously we're not in it anymore, and we're in the Carabao Cup final against a team who were just running away with the league. And let's be real, I think no one's going to catch them. They'll probably win the rest of their games. Um, mm. So the cup final is a bit of a. If, if I was going to be in a cup final against anyone. Then I would have been more confident. But now I know it's against City, and there are teams around us, and we're all you know, fairly equal on points. And top four, like you said, isn't guaranteed. Yeah. We're nowhere near comfortable yet. It's something that you sort of hear when you're happy about it. But actually, fully taking it apart, yeah, you know, how good can you feel about it? Hmm. Yeah, um, I think um, I think overall this season, people have been quite, um, in my opinion, people have been quite. Um, what's the word? Uh, like overreactionary with Mourinho. I, I mean, people like, I mean, quite frequently people blame his tactics and everything. But then again, I think in particular it's a player's mentality. I think, to be honest, like after the Zagreb game, the 3 0, as expected, like I kind of lost my shit and kind of went in on Mourinho. But uh, um, I guess I was just in like the heat of the moment. But then I'm watching the highlights the next morning and it's literally the players. I mean, I mean, like you can see Mourinho. And, and what's his name? Sacramento, his assistant. Yeah, John. I mean, both of them are on the touchline, literally screaming at the players to press them and get forward. But, but the players aren't doing that. Like, do you think it's just down to the players just not wanting to play for him anymore? Go on, Josh. Uh, nah. I think... I think summer is just... I think the dressing room might be quite split because you can see players like Kane, Son... Um, Hoiberg obviously still trust in Mourinho like our best players but like players like I players like Winks um, on a stretch maybe Toby because of what maybe might have happened uh, probably Sissoko like I don't think they trust the Mourinho system because yep. they've been like so like good on the potch like the attacking style maybe they don't, don't trust his defensive um, ways hmm. in my opinion um, yeah my opinion um, also at the same time I must remember these are the same players under performing for Mourinho these are the same players who were under both, um, who were under performing for potch before we got sacked we must remember that um, exactly. I mean obviously players like Sanchez Winks Sissoko like, players like that like these are the same players who are under performing for Mourinho and we also must remember we were top of the league just before halfway through the season. So it kind of shows that, in my opinion, in my opinion, like people could, in my opinion, like people could like call me deluded for this statement or like call me um, or, say that I, or say that, oh yeah, like there's no chance. But in my opinion, we are one very good back line away from competing for the title. Mm. But I'm being serious. Like I know Man City are really good at the minute, but I think if we can get one or two like commanding centre backs, like two centre backs who know what they're doing, if you know what I mean, two like barking centre backs, you know what I mean, like two like commanding, like two commanding leaders. Like, yeah, yeah, that's it. 
Um, Back to Tom Good and Alderweire Road. Yeah, like two like leader yeah. type sort of centre backs. Like if we can get a couple of those in <laughs> to start off with, I think like I think that could be a, like a really good like step in stone in in terms of our progress towards competing for the title because you've seen how good our attack is and and the players that Mourinho has signed about a good eighty percent of them have turned out very well. I mean, obviously Hoiberg has been for me the bargain of the season, only like twelve million yeah. quid overall. Um, I think um, Mourinho signed Bergwijn. Who I will give a chance because um, because for me like he hasn't I say over in twenty twenty one overall he hasn't been given the chance because um, I think ever since like Bell like started to come on form starting off against like Wolfsburg first leg um, I mean Marino was starting him frequently Bale and I can see why obviously because like because the thing is like why change a winning formula but but for me I think Bergwijn's been decent overall but his end product's been very very poor and it kind of shows. I think he's only got one assist this season and zero goals, which is quite poor for a white winger. But at the same time, like I will still give him a chance. I think he's still only young as well. And um, I know he's got quality. So um, I think Joe Hart in terms of, I think Joe Hart in terms of mentality is, has been quite beneficial. I think in goal, he hasn't really had much to do, uh, particularly because he played like so-called farmers and everything with Joe Hart in goal. So for me, like in terms of the dressing room, I think Joe Hart's been quite a beneficial signing um, I think Gareth Bale overall his loan spell has been Meh, I would call it average I would call it average but for me like, I was expecting that because Bale was ageing now and he hasn't played for a very long time uh, considering the way he was getting treated at Real Madrid under um, Zinedine Zidane obviously but overall like looking at the players Mourinho has signed like most of them like a good majority of them have turned out to be pretty good ones obviously I mean obviously Hoiberg's been the best one uh, Mourinho, Mourinho and Ndombele have brought on. I think for me, like Mourinho has brought out the best Ndombele has been at Tottenham since he arrived. Um, I think Kane's been, uh, like, to be honest, I think, I think, like, if you look at Mourinho's tactics, Kane's been coming deep a lot more. And that, and for me, that kind of really, like, exposes that he's more than just a striker. But I noticed that, like, three years ago. I think, um, I think Jamie Carragher said, like, a couple of seasons ago, Kane's passing is better than most central midfielders in the Premier League. I'm pretty certain he said something along those lines a season or two ago. I was thinking to myself as well. Like, Pochettino obviously was the per like, he made Kane. So I was thinking to myself, who's got the more more out of Kane? And I I would still, I would say Mourinho because I think Hmm. under Poch, obviously Poch made him into a world class striker. But I think. Mourinho's made him into not just a world-class striker, but one of the best in the world and probably easily in the top three in the Premier League best players. And I think, mm. like, especially this season, I think you could give a very, 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 very good argument he is the best player in the world. Like, he's had the best, mm. like, season. Obviously, I don't think he has, but I think he's definitely in that argument. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for me, like it really like brings out that his passing. I think he's got what thirteen assists this season yeah, in the Premier. Th- he's th- thirteen assists. Yeah, it's thirteen assists. Yeah, nineteen goals and thirteen assists in thirty Premier League games. I and mean, we also must remember he was injured for two or three games as well. So like it really like so it really emphasises how good he's been. But I think, um, but for me, like I think the assist is mainly down to Mourinho setting up because um, because you see because you, because you see the comparison between Pochettino against Mourinho. I mean, Pochettino has to get forward more. Mourinho's more, um, and Mourinho's more, um, and more of a defensive coach. But I think that's why Kane's got more assists because he, uh, because Kane's had to come all deep. And Mourinho knows his hold-up play is excellent, which kind of allows Son to, uh, to like, run through the defence with his pace. And therefore, that, and therefore that exposes why Kane has been so good in the season in terms of his assists as well. And it kind of brings out, I'd say like Kane's, Best sort of ability um, ever, in my opinion. But anyways, um, I say moving on to the defensive part. I mean, for me, um, for me, like I think this is the one criticism of Mourinho. We tend to start on the back foot a lot. Like if you, like for example, sixteen seventeen season, the season we went under Fido White Hart Lane um, against teams like your Bournemouths, your your Watfords, your Norwiches, and stuff like that. We would get an early goal, and we would, and we would. And we would win the game four or five nil. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, we would get the early goal when the game would finish one one. Like, 
for me, that's down to the tactics particularly. Like, I know defence is poor as well, but then again, but then again, we have every right to go for the second goal and then win the game 4-5-0. For example, Burnley, we got we got the first goal in two minutes and we won the game 4-0. Like, I mean, that's how it should be every game against these lower half teams. I mean, Josh, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. Do you think like, the one one goals against lower teams are particularly down to the tactics? I mean, obviously, I think I don't think it's been generally bad the last couple of months, but obviously before, I say January, December, November, I think when we came off that good run of Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City, where we didn't lose and we won two and drawn one, I think the team thought they could play this good against teams like Crystal Palace, teams like Wolves, teams like Southampton's, or I know we haven't played Southampton, but they're a good example. Um, your Fulham's, your your foot, like yeah, like Crystal teams who are quite low down the league table. Like we thought we could play like that because we beat the big boys, but obviously mm. that's not going to work every single game. And I think Mourinho's learned, I think, ever since probably the Fulham game that you can't just sit back on your lead. I mean, even though Newcastle we drew two two, we. People say, oh, we didn't really go forward and stuff. I don't necessarily agree with that. I thought we were quite slow, but we were still trying to make things happen. I think the 2-2 draw is particularly down to the players not taking the chances. Like, yeah. Fair enough, I, I know there was individual errors, but Kane hit the post. Right at the end, Lamella had the chance to square it to Son. Tanganga header off the line. I think that 2-2 yeah. I, I draw was particularly down to us not being clinical enough because, mm. because you saw when it was 2-1... We're pushing for the third goal. And Newcastle's 2-2 two, two equaliser came on the counter-attack, which shows that we were pushing for the third goal to kill off the game. So then again, I think you are right. Like um, I think he has learned from the Fulham game that you can't just sit back because these teams will punish you. It's the Premier League. Like Any team could punish you with the quality they've got up front. Um, Sean, what do you think? I think, yeah, like you said about the 2-2, two, 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 it represents this, this season of not just tactics, but of setup. A lot of our results are just sort of missing that that final piece. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's, it's obviously to do with these, these errors and the problems that are probably going on behind the scenes, which only the staff and players know about. But there's something just lacking for me, and where, which wasn't, like you said, four, like four years ago today, we had that 4-0 win at White Hart Lane, where scored early, finished the game off. And I think that sort of, ceiling element to games where we score early and then don't sit back is what really like pull the team together because you get on this good flow of results but now I think it's just up and down there's no sort of continuous run of form and it's probably just difficult to judge all the games like I know like you said about United we're going in feeling not confident that's probably how the players are going to go in feeling um, so it's not I'm not saying it's sort of a mentality thing but it's definitely to do with all these chances that need to start being taken. Is it to do with the training? Is it to do with the setup? Or is it just down to down to the people who got on pitch? Also, um, I do remember the one more draw against Fulham. I think it was the same throw. It's like I know we were defending at the same time, but the amount of chances we had to make it 2 0, like Son especially, like he hit the post, yeah, exactly. missed the one on one. I, I know people can blame Reno's tactics, but then again, I, then again, I do think it's also down to how clinical we are on the day. And against Newcastle, we didn't show that. Um, against Newcastle, we showed we weren't clinical enough, which is why which is why it ended too. So we got punished for not taking our chances and also individual mistakes caused that. Um, but anyways, to finish off with Mourinho, um, uh, I mean, obviously we got the Cowboy Cup final um, on the 25th of April. I think that's in like two and a half weeks' time now. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously Mourinho's uh, record in finals is very good. Um, I think like... Would you rather win this cup or get top four? I think win it. I think I think every single Spurs fan would be ridiculous to deny a trophy for a spot in the Champions League. You know, we're we're labelled a team with no history, with no trophies. There's, I think, there's no reason to deny. You know, chance. I mean, it is a chance. I mean, yeah, we said of City are just incredible this season, running away, winning all the, the games. Is, but I don't think people would change their mind, even if we won the Carabao Cup, because it would just be, oh, it's the Carabao Cup. We've won two Carabao Cups in the last 13 yeah. years. That is still very bad for our, a team of... It's years. bad. For how good our team has been for the last 
10 or so years. Like, to win two Carabao Cups in 13 years is quite bad. And I think getting top four, I think for me, would be better because it guarantees Champions League yeah. football, highest stage in the world. And I think next season, maybe if we don't win a trophy, we can be OK. We can keep Mourinho for one more season. We can rebuild the squad. And then next season, we can mm. go. We can push we can push for the league. We can push for the... Well, not really push for the Champions League, but go far in the Champions League. Push for an FA Cup. Push for a Carabao Cup. Like, I don't think it'd be a failure after this season if we don't win the Carabao Cup and we just get top four. Because I still think that's a very, very, very good season. But, yeah. Hmm. yeah I agree with Josh. Um, I agree with Josh because, first of all, because first of all, in my opinion, the Carabao Cup's a lose-lose situation. Because if we lose, we'll get mocked for saying, oh, our Spurs lost another final, still 13 years. But then again, if we win, people say, oh, it's just the Carabao Cup. It means nothing. So for, for me, like, I agree with Josh because top four, because let's be real, Spurs are one of the richest clubs in Europe. Um, for, for me, for me, it's up there, one of the best stadiums in the world. And it kind of, and it's kind of, it's kind of disappointing that with this slow down in, it's kind of disappointing that with this slow down in the rankings, like literally back in August, we, back in August, we've made an Amazon documentary, signed, signed some big players, got a big stadium I've got a big worldwide fan base and we lost to Dynamo Zagreb 3-0 in the Europa League. Like it kind of it kind of shows how really like disappointing it is like, in terms of our standards because they should be much higher. Like we're a club that belongs to a Champions League. Like like literally Spurs got to the like to be honest, like I've never seen more I've never seen more of a regression like ever. Like literally a couple of years ago we were in the Champions League final. Like, uh, I, th I think it's almost two years ago now, June the first. Today's April the eighth or ninth. Literally, we were the Champions League final about 22 months ago. And now we're sitting here on a podcast out of the Europa League round of 16, discussing about getting top four again. Like, it kind of shows it kind of shows how much of a regression it's been. But uh, lastly, to finish off, um, what's your situation, Mourinho? Like, would you give him, like, another season or two? Or, or do you think he's just not the right man to rebuild our squad? Um, uh, Sean, I'll start with you. No, go on, Josh. You go. Oh, no. I was saying, um, I think, I don't think we can judge right now. I think, I think we have to wait until the end of the season and see where we are. I think where we finished, how we've done in the Carabao Cup, how we've done the Premier League. But from, I think if you can predict what happens, my prediction is I don't think we'll get tough. I don't think we'll win the Carabao Cup final. I think Mourinho yeah. will go and I think he should go because I don't think, like, let's be real. It's not his fault, but I feel this team needs to rebuild under a younger manager and people people will expect someone like a Nagelsmann to come in and like do really well straight away. But you have to realise he's going to need time. He's going to need one or two windows to do to make this team where Poch was a couple of years ago. We're going to need to rebuild. So, yeah, but if Mourinho does get top four and he gets the Caracol final and wins it, I would rebuild with him because even then, if we get top four, I just hope, I pray Levy doesn't see this. It doesn't sugarcoat his eyes and like it doesn't make him rebuild yeah. and have a mass exodus because even then, we still need to rebuild, even though we've had a very good season. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I should about you. No, I definitely agree. I think um, I, I do sort of agree with what you say. It's sort of a harder way to look at it, but you know, looking at odds, we are less favoured to win the cup. Looking at the sort of run of fixtures compared to others, we're slightly well, slightly better off with finishing in the top four. But worst case scenario, neither of those things happen. Uh, and if Mourinho does go, I think Levy's got to pay him off something like thirty million pounds as a sum. And without, mm. if we don't even get Europa League, it drops to sort of the lower twenties. So that's a, that's a sum which will be paid off. I think over time is. It's definitely is in the contract, but mm. but then you then you look at you know talk, we talk we spoke about the players constantly letting down managers and the the, the cycle we're getting is actually if we get rid of Mourinho and bring another younger manager uh, and like you said Josh he needs time to rebuild I don't understand why that time can't come under Mourinho I think if he actually is backed with a proper back line with actually given what he wants and it's not like you know it's not like he's going to ask for Skriniar from Milan and he's going to get you know a centre back from the second league, second league. It, it, it's a uh, you know it's a uh, it's it's a sort of loosely situation when you talk about backing from from Levy because it's either 
you'll, you'll he'll get what he wants or we'll get nothing and we'll be in square one, which is then why actually, you know, maybe we need a new style of football manager. You know, these modern football, like, like Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea, I mean, he's done an absolute job. Uh, yeah. And I wouldn't mind seeing that sort of thing on him because it's different football. But I, yeah. I don't want to get caught in a cycle over the next decade or half decade of this club of just the same players, like, just letting down the same manager and we're going the cycle of constantly having to pay off a manager because they're just they're getting let down. Yeah, in my opinion, I would give him another season and here's the main reason why. I think if we play attacking football now, we would concede a lot more goals considering that um, considering, considering the Deadwood we've still got the club. For example, Pochettino was our manager, same defenders, remember, we, we conceded seven goals to Bayern we considered three goals to Brighton. These are the same defenders under a different style of play, which is attacking football. Yeah. Like if we played defensive football, like I think, I think for now that's a lot better. Like for me, for me that's more beneficial because if we play attacking when, football, when we were playing defensive football, I think we actually had, I think we had the best defense in the league, even though we kept drawing games yeah. and like where, like he did a good job. And I think people thought, oh, it's Tottenham. These were like in the Champions League two years ago final. And I think people look at that Hmm. and say, you're doing a bad job. But he wasn't, with the squad he had, wasn't doing a bad job. Because I think that is a fifth or sixth place squad. Let's be real. I don't think Mourinho's done a horrible job. But I just think people expect us to get Champions League. They expect us to do these Mm. things. But with these group of players, you're not going to get... You're not going to, like, do as well as you can. Like, when you... I'm amazed now he got that team to the top of the league at the beginning of the season. Maybe it was from fitness, probably was of other teams. They were building up their fitness. We don't know. But, yeah, I just think, I agree with you guys. I think he deserves more time. But we've never really seen Mourinho in a job after three years or two seasons where he's failed like to rebuild a team. We've never, ever seen that before. Like when he's been a manager, so I believe he's got to gamble and keep him, or he's got to go for a new manager. He's got well, really, he has to gamble either way, doesn't he? So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's almost just like he's taking risks both way, both ways, mm. and and it's something that I don't think anyone could call looking sort mm. of a season on. I I can't mm. say now whether we're going to be this time next season because it's just so unpredictable, and that's not just about. Yeah. Swords, it's about the clubs around us and you know with uh, sort of the big money signings this year talking about however Haaland goes to a uh, big club sign or the, the sort of traditional top six it will be so influential this summer and I think if we can't match what other clubs bring in the business they do this summer we will be you know seriously disadvantaged yeah so I think um so I think Maria should be just given one more season get the players that he wants personally and um I think that's a sort of period when we could start judging him because you must remember, like these is because we must remember, like there is still Deadwood from two or three years ago um, when Poch was still the manager um, of the club. Like players like Sissoko, Sanchez, Winks, Dyer, etc. I'd say, I'd say, get rid of the Deadwoods, get the players that Mourinho wants. If it doesn't work out, then I think he should be sacked. But, but anyways. Um, uh, I think that's going to be a wrap up. So, any last thoughts from you guys? Or uh, look on to Sunday. Yeah. Just go on to Sunday. Um, I just wanted to plug. We're very close on um, Instagram to two thousand followers. Uh, we're only, I think, nearly a hundred followers away, or two hundred. So this is so bad. I'm decent. sorry. So, yeah. Um, we'll. Uh, yeah. So. That's all I need to say. Episode one of the Hotspur News podcast. Obviously, today we discussed the two series draw, United preview, and Jose Mourinho. I thank you guys for watching. We're doing many more of these episodes revolving around the club. Thanks, Josh and Sean, for joining us on um, episode one. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.